My brothers and sisters, this ceremony that is taking place here is, for me at least, and I'm sure for many of you, uh, a moment in which we gather together many memories. For me, certainly, it's lovely to be back in Coventry and to remember some of the previous events and important moments that have taken place for me in this cathedral. And I'm very grateful for our welcome here and also for me to be alongside Archbishop Bernard. But most vividly, what I recall today and ponder are the beginnings of the Friends of the Holy Land. It was in 2007 that the Archdiocese of Birmingham, we decided we would have a full-blown diocesan pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I think it was the first such diocesan pilgrimage for a number of years since the Intifada. And I'm glad that it has stimulated again formal diocesan pilgrimages to the Holy Land. One goes from Westminster Diocese on Wednesday. It was a big pilgrimage. We had two coach loads, and that wasn't always easy. I remember arriving in Bethlehem, and one of the pilgrims, one of the lady pilgrims, was very upset because her luggage was not on the same coach as he was, and it had gone to the wrong hotel, and we were due to have a formal dinner, and she had no makeup. <laughs> but you know the impact of that pilgrimage was quite remarkable. I remember very well on the plane when it took off from Tel Aviv, and the seat light sign went out. And almost immediately, a hundred people stood up and started moving round and talking to each other. And the steward said to me, where have you lot been? People aren't normally that animated immediately to want to carry on talking and chatting to each other. Something in us changed in that pilgrimage. And I remember the first reunion that we had afterwards in the Grimshaw room next to St. Chad's Cathedral. And there was an insistent question, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? And the first suggestion was prayer. And the second suggestion was, could we not get some practical help to the people we'd met? And so we started with a very simple collection, which was called The Widow's Might. And isn't it wonderful to see how that first diocesan pilgrimage organized by Michael Whelan has grown and blossomed. And here we celebrate the 10th anniversary of its foundation. And it's our way of saying to our Christian brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, do not go away. Please stay. We recognized on that pilgrimage the difficulty you face. We also recognize the importance of your presence. So we want to say again, please stay. Please do not go away. We will do our best. Personally, there were two great challenges that came across to me in that pilgrimage. And they're difficult. They take us in a way, they take me past my comfort zone. The first, the first is this. To go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land has to include a deep acceptance that Jesus was formed 
and grew up and was indeed a member of the Jewish faith. That was the way he prayed. That was shaped his life. And that Jewish faith we call our elder brother. It shaped the life of Jesus. And understanding that faith helps us to enter into his life. So our ongoing relationships with the Jewish communities wherever we live is for me an important consequence of every pilgrimage that we make. Building bridges is not easy. And building bridges demands our recognition of these deepest roots, even when relationships are very tense. But to me, that ongoing recognition of our common roots with the Jewish community and our need to find ways of deepening our mutual understanding remains as a consequence of that pilgrimage. The second challenge that I recall so much is that to follow in the footsteps of Jesus is to recognize that one of the great characteristics of the Holy Land is that it's full of rock. The hillsides are full of rock. It's a hard place in which to try to live. Overcoming that geographical, for, geological formation takes great resources. And when a people has great difficulty in accessing those resources, the task is all the more difficult. But rock figures in all the crucial moments of the life of Jesus. Think of the rock, of the agony in the garden. When we go to that church, we can touch that rock and feel how unyielding and hard it is. Think of the rock that we see at Golgotha, inside the Basilica, which we can kneel and touch, the rock which held the cross of Jesus. Think of the rock of his tomb and how we seek to be as close as we can to that rock as well. What these rocks teach us is that it is only in the power of the Holy Spirit that they are broken open. And as in Massa in the desert, yield water a new life. It is that thought that comes back into my mind when we hear those words from St. Paul, when he says, the Spirit comes to, to help us in our weakness. The Spirit comes less to help us in our strength. The Spirit comes less to make us victorious. The Spirit comes less to make us be held in high regard. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. And every time you and I and our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land feel the hardness of those rocks, whatever they might be, then we turn most longingly to the Lord and ask for his Spirit. And the Spirit, St. Paul tells us, comes to help us in our weakness, especially when we pray. And when we, pray, when we find prayer hard, the Spirit gives us the words in which to pray. The life of the Christian in the Holy Land is not easy. And we pray for the Holy Spirit 
for all of us, for them especially, in these times in which they know weakness. And we pray that through our presence and pilgrimages, as in that 2007 pilgrimage, our hearts will be filled with compassion. And we pray that the practical help fashioned carefully through the Friends of the Holy Land will go from strength to strength as a sign of our brotherhood and service. I thank you all for being here. I thank those especially who shape and continue to develop the Friends of the Holy Land. And we pray, we promise, unceasingly for our brothers and sisters there. Amen.